What's going on Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan and it is Saturday which means I am doing my preview video for the New York Giants versus Miami Dolphins um, which obviously is tomorrow. Today's Saturday so it's tomorrow. Um, and look this is a you know this is definitely a winnable game. Um, for the Dolphins, it's it's gonna be a home game for them. They play at MetLife uh, MetLife Stadium, um, so you know same stadium as the 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 Jets. And since it's in New York, it's gonna be at the same stadium. Um, it's definitely a winnable game for us. They're two and eleven. You know we're three and ten. They're a bad team. We're a bad team. So uh, there's you know there's definitely gonna be some opportunities here. Um, before I get into, you know, the previous games and stats and so on and so forth, as always, let me go ahead and give you the injury report. So as it stands, it looks like uh, defensive tackle Gerald Willis. Uh, I mean, he's out, but he got put on to injured reserve, so obviously he's going to be out. Um, Chandler Cox is doubtful with a shoulder. Uh, Devontae Parker and Albert Wilson were questionable with concussions. Um, it, the reports that I've seen though is, is that they have been cleared of the concussion protocol. So, um, we do expect them to play, which is obviously a good thing for our offense. Um, so, you know, um, but you know, we got, we got guys, you know, so, uh, Chandler Cox was limited on Thursday. Cornerback Nick Needham, Parker and Wilson, obviously. Jerome Baker, uh, Fitzpatrick, Patrick Laird, Alan Hearns, all guys also on the injury report that are going to be battling through some injuries. Um, for the Giants, let's see, guard Kevin Zeitler, quarterback Daniel Jones, tight end Rhett Ellison, and tight end Evan Ingram have all been ruled out of this game. Um... So that actually also does, uh, I mean, missing one of their, you know, guards and certainly tight end Evan Ingram is a big deal. Uh, and that will give us a little bit of a, you know, uh, matchup advantage, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously our defense sucks and it's a bunch of young players that don't know what the fuck they're doing for the most part, uh, especially since we keep just bringing in new guys and throwing them right in there and stuff. So... I mean, we'll see how it goes. Honestly, you know, this is going to be... It's two, you know, shit teams playing. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, for them, Corey Ballantyne, cornerback Corey Ballantyne with a concussion and wide receiver, Golden Tate with a foot. Uh, we're also listed on their injury report, but they should be available. Um... Yeah, and that's really about it. So, there's that. Um, I mean, you know, the Dolphins are super banged up. They seem to, you know, be relatively healthy. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it just kind of is what it is. You know, obviously our injury report is relatively small. But as we know, that's in large part due to the fact that we have a massive injured reserve list and you know we still do have a handful of guys that are gonna be playing through injuries as well as you know we did cut some guys um that were that were injured and have throughout the season so um yeah so getting into you know the statistics and everything for this game um obviously the dolphins are three and ten the giants are two and eleven uh, as far as league standings go we as of you know this week going into this week we are scoring 17 points per game that obviously did go up slightly <clears throat> um an average per game we've scored 221 on the season which is still not particularly great um but you know it did it did our overall average of points per game did go up slightly since we scored 21 last week but we did uh, slide down from 29th to 30th overall. They're scoring 19 points per game, which is 25th. Uh, yards per game, we had a slight increase in overall average to 283.5, but we remain at 30th in the league. They are 
uh, producing 311.9, which is 26th in the league. We have 216.2 pass yards per game, which is a slight uptick in overall average, and we did move from 24th to 23rd. Um, they are at 218.2 per game, which is 22nd rush yards per game. We obviously did go up a, a little bit. Uh, because we did get like I think 109 or something rush yards or no 122 rush yards But obviously like half of that was once again Ryan Fitzpatrick running for his life um, And he did set a single game Dolphins record for rush yards for a quarterback um, but again because he was running for his life and He is on pace to be the Dolphins leading rusher this season which is just a fucking disaster. Um, and just goes to show you how terrible our actual run game has been. Uh, but we did have a slight increase to 63.7 rush yards per game. We are still at 32nd in the league though. Didn't move anywhere. They are getting 93.8 on the ground per game, which is 26th. Defensively, we had a slight decrease in... Um, uh, points allowed from like 31 something to 30.7 per game but we have given up almost 400 points on the season uh, 399 and we are still ranked 32nd in the league so we didn't go anywhere in the standings they are 27.8 per game giving up 27.8 which is 28 yards allowed uh, we had a slight decrease but it was like it went from 399.7 to 397.7. So very marginal. We're still at 30th in the league. They're giving up 376.3, which is 27th. Pass yards allowed. We had a slight increase in pass yardage uh, allowed, <clears throat> which is obviously not good for the defense. You want it to go down. Um, so we had a slight increase in our average per game to 256.6. But we are still at 23rd overall in the league. And they are giving up 261.8, which is 26th in the league. And for rush yards, we had a slight tick down in overall average per game. Uh, down to 141.1, which is obviously still not good. <clears throat> and we have to face Saquon Barkley this week. Um, but we did remain at 31st overall in the league. They're giving up 114.5, which is 20th. So as far as our previous games go, we played the Jets, obviously not a very good team. They played the Eagles, which are an average team. Um, we're obviously both bad teams. So again, it's gonna be a square off of, you know, bad teams, but this will actually, you know, obviously have implications for the draft order and, and how we select. Um, but we'll get into that in a minute. So in our previous game, we had 362 total yards. They had 255. We had 240 passing. They had 182. We had 122 rushing. They had 73. We were 5.6 yards per play. They were 4.9. No fumbles by either team. We threw an interception. They did not. We were 30% on third down. They were 16%, which is obviously super bad. 30 is not very good either, but it's better than 16. We had the ball for 30 minutes and 6 seconds. They had it for 21.59. We had 5 penalties. They had 7. In the passing game, Ryan Fitzpatrick was 21 for 37. 56.8% completion percentage. 245 yards. No touchdowns with an interception and a 65.7 passer rating. On the year, he's uh, completing 62.2% of his passes for 2,511 yards, 13 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and an 80.6 passer rating. Eli Manning played the last game after having been out for the majority of the season. He started the first few games, and then, um, you know, Daniel Jones took over. Uh, for a while he is now injured perhaps he would have been in if he's not you know wasn't injured with a high ankle sprain uh, But either way Eli Manning did come in and he is going to play for this game He was 15 of 30 obviously 50% completion percentage 203 yards two touchdowns and a 94.2 passer rating on the season He's completing 59.7% of his passes for 759 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, and an 82.6 passer rating. Again, he spent the most, uh, the majority of the season on the sideline, and that's why his stat line is pretty low <coughs> overall. 
In the rushing game, Ryan Fitzpatrick led the way for us. Seven rushes, 65 yards, and a 9-3 average. Patrick Laird had 15 rushes, 48 yards, and a 3-2. Miles Gaskin, four rushes, five yards, and a 1-3 average. I don't know why I put that in there. I did that last time, too. I usually don't put it if they're under 10 yards because um, they didn't really contribute much. Um, but, you know, Miles Gaskin didn't really do anything. He was a 1.3 average. So just, to, you know, Patrick Laird has been unquestionably our best back. Uh, I'm still pretty confident that if Kalen Balaj wasn't injured, they would still try and push him. Um, but we'll never know for these last few games. Uh, so the, the coaching staff gets, uh, you know, a, uh, a pass there. Um, Saquon Barkley led the way for them. 17 rushes, 66 yards, and a 3.9 average. I mean, look, if we can, you know, if we can hold him to that, that kind of stat line, then, um, you know, we definitely have a chance to win this game. I think we overall definitely have a chance to win this game. <clears throat> uh, you know, we'll have to see. We'll get into that in a minute, of course. Isaiah Ford led the way for us in receiving 6 of 9, 92 yards. Alan Hearns was 5 of 8, 68. Patrick Laird, 4 of 5, 38. And Devontae Parker, 2 of 2 for 28. Obviously, part of that was because Parker went out with a concussion. Um... But he and Albert Wilson are expected to be back. I mean, they've been removed from the injury report. Um, and Or at least given no game status designation. And, you know, they didn't have... They, on Friday during practice, they didn't know... They no longer had their red contact... Uh, red no contact jerseys. And um, they apparently have been cleared. So we'll see. I mean, it's always possible that this coaching staff decides to put them on the inactives list uh to be careful um but thereby you know hurting our chances to win this game darius slayton uh led the way for them five of eight 154 yards and two touchdowns sterling shepherd was four of seven for 28 and golden tate one of five for 11. defensively the dolphins had one sack three tackles for a loss a forced fumble one interception and five passes defense giants had three sacks seven tackles for loss one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and six passes defense. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I mean, look, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> like I said, I mean, you guys know that for me, the big things that I'm looking for, this is going to end up being a really short video. I mean, at the end of the day, there wasn't really much to talk about. Didn't really have any other news or anything like that. And, um, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, look, it's two bad teams. I, I mean, it doesn't mean anything except for, you know, draft order at this point. Um, you know, which obviously does have some implications. But with the way that, you know, things are going, you know, Chase Young is, has said that he's going to stay in uh, school next year. Tua Taga Vailoa. Um is a massive risk maybe he'll stay in school maybe he doesn't we have to wait and see how that goes uh but look i mean this this upcoming draft i mean the way it's shaping up at this point i, I mean look you know at, at the end of the day i i don't really want to get into too much speculation until we at least know what our draft positioning is going to be. I mean, because if we end up losing the next three games, I think it's pretty, um, it's a pretty for sure thing that we're going to lose against the Patriots in Foxborough in week 17. Even if they do rest players, you know, even if for some reason, you know, uh, Tom Brady doesn't play or, you know, they play backups, I'm fairly certain they're going to beat us anyway. Uh, it's, pretty inconceivable that we would beat the Patriots in Foxborough even with backups so you know it's a pretty sure thing that we're gonna lose that game that'll be our 11th loss on the season um and so but if we you know if we lost the next two games against the Giants and the Bengals that would put us at 3 and 13 which could potentially push us up to maybe the third or second pick obviously depending on how things go with the giants the rest of the way and obviously how things go with like the washington redskins the west rest of the way also along with you know the some of these other teams so just real quick let's look so i mean 
again, a lot can change over the next few weeks. Really, it's it's super difficult to even speculate, like, you know, what the dog, because it, I mean, if, if we did end up getting the number two pick, I mean, what would we do though, right? Like, because if the Bengals took Joe Burrow, what would we do at number two? If Chase Young doesn't declare for the draft and stays in school, which looks like he's going to do, then he's off the board. I mean, would you take Tua at that position? I personally wouldn't. To me, honestly, a trade back probably would be the most uh, ideal thing to do there. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we could win this, this game against the Giants and we could win against the Bengals. I think it's actually pretty likely that we do win both of those games. Um, I certainly hope we win both of those games because I just want wins. I just want to see my team win point blank, bottom line, period. Um, but if we do win those games, then obviously we could drop out of the top five into the back end of the top ten. So, again, I mean... I don't want to speculate too much right now because so much can happen and it relies on not just us winning or losing, but uh, you know what happens with other teams. But let's real quick take a look at the top 10. Obviously the Bengals, are, but, but part of this is uh, this evaluation too is looking how um, tight the top 10 is, right? So like uh, the Bengals are currently one in 12. Um, it's almost a sure thing that they're going to get the number one pick the giants are currently two and eleven but then the washington redskins are three and ten then we're three and ten then you have uh detroit and arizona which are both three nine and one jacksonville and atlanta are four and nine so detroit is five arizona is six jacksonville is seven uh atlanta is eight the new york uh the new york jets are currently at number nine at five and nine and the chargers are currently at 10 at five and eight so as you see and then i mean even number 11 the denver broncos are five and eight the carolina panthers are five and eight at 12 so the the reason why i say that is because we have three wins if we beat the giants and if we beat the Bengals, that puts us and then if we lose to the the patriots that would put us at five and eleven on the season the team picking at number 10 currently only has five wins. The team currently picking at number 12 only has five wins. So there's potential that we could even, you know, drop out of the top 10. Um, a lot of different things needs to happen. I mean, you know, we'd have to win these next couple games and like, you know, all these teams or most of these teams would have to lose, blah, 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 you know, to push them ahead of us. But I mean, you know, it's certainly possible Detroit, Arizona, Jacksonville, Atlanta, the, the Jets. I mean, you know, any of those teams could end up losing. I mean, uh, the Jets did just lose against, because they played, they played a short week against, who did they play? The Ravens, right? They got stomped by the Ravens to put them at five and nine, you know? And so we'll have to see how the rest of their, um, you know games go obviously they're not gonna play on sunday because they just played on thursday so that's their game for this week but you know i mean they could still end up you know losing their last two games uh, i'm not sure exactly who they play but if they lost their last two games that would put them at 5 and 11 on the season and um if we you know end up at 5 and 11 on the season then you know they could potentially jump us right so but there are plenty of teams that, that you know the the lions the cardinal anyway so before we get there let's just wait and see what happens the next few weeks and then we'll start speculating on whether or not you know the dolphins are going to trade up or down or you know who they're going to take i mean it's honestly even after we know it's going to be super tough to even tell because again i mean tua's got that major injury you know we'll have to wait and see what happens with him chase young is apparently not going to declare for the draft i mean so there's just there there's just so much mystery and this is again part of the reason why i i completely disagreed with the tank to begin with because you know things like the Tua injury and Chase Young not declaring those are massive wrenches thrown into the whole system right so like you know 
people were relying on ridiculous things like the Steelers started off you know bad you know at the beginning of the season and everybody's like oh that's a guaranteed top five pick well how did that work out as it stands right now it's in the early 20s everybody's like oh two is a sure thing and whether we trade up to get him or get the number one pick boom we got our quarterback of the uh, our franchise quarterback for the future but how that how's that turning out so far they're like, oh, okay, well maybe, you know, if we lose the rest of our games and we get that number two pick, then even if we don't get Joe Burrow because the Bengals take him, we can get Chase Young. Well, how's that looking, right? There's too many things that can go wrong, not to mention the fact that I personally do not trust Steven Ross or Chris Greer, right? And to be fair to Chris Greer, like some of his best drafts came the past few years, right? During the Adam Gase era. But... Then he got rid of all of those players. I mean, and and so far their talent evaluation has been pretty garbage. Uh, if you're if you're keeping it real and you know being totally objective about it, it's been hot garbage. So, um, and their first draft is very very underwhelming. You know, I mean Isaiah Prince is already gone, right? One of our draft picks is already gone. Not even a full year into it. So I don't have any faith in Steven Ross or, uh, you know, this front office to get this right. And so, you know, I, I just, again, I mean, you guys know how I feel. I think it's going to end up being a massive disaster and blow up in their face and blah, 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 blah. Obviously, you know, to be fair, we still have to wait and see. There's a lot, but there's so much, you know, mystery, so much unknown and so many things that can go wrong. That is, that's one of the primary reasons why I completely disagreed with this from, this from the start, especially when it didn't need to happen. Okay, yes, the past two years were, you know, um, slight regressions uh, from the 10 and 6 season we had in 2016, but that was the first time we had a winning record and went to the playoffs in eight years. And that was under Adam Gase. His drafts were great. We were on the right path. Right and and we had those setbacks due to things that were not in our control. Right, not in Adam Gase's control. Right, um, hurricanes, a wall linebackers, offensive line coach getting fired due to snorting coke, as opposed to the offensive line coach that got fired a week into training camp under this regime because he wouldn't play or insert uh, Michael Dieter and Shaq Calhoun. Michael Dieter's been a hot fucking mess this entire season and Shaq Calhoun even though he's been actually has been one of your better offensive linemen has mysteriously shown up on the inactives list by the coach who fired his offensive line coach for not playing him so I mean it's just a giant fucking mess and but again, it didn't need to happen, man. Ryan Tannehill balling out for the fucking Titans. About to, you know, on pace to fucking lead them to a... Uh, and I'm so fucking tired of it, dude. Like, I'm so... T People need to give the man his fucking credit. Like, again, he holds a tons of, ton of Dolphins records. Including rookie records. Okay? He's... Even in his rookie season in the first four years, despite being the most sacked quarterback in the league, still put up good numbers, good stat lines, was an Iron Man, has been an Iron Man ever since, you know, hasn't gotten injured ever since the unfortunate knee injury, right? He's tough in that pocket. He hangs in there, right? He's great on the move and can throw on the run. He's good with his legs. He's good at the line of scrimmage, changing up plays. He's good with the RPOs. He can hit any pass anywhere on the field. I mean, the dude's a fucking boss. Point blank bottom line period and the Dolphins were stupid right and then everybody wants to be like oh it's only because the Dolphin or I mean the Titans have a decent offensive line with a good running game and a solid defense okay well why the fuck then did the Dolphins not do that because that was that was the whole problem with the team is that they didn't build it around Tannehill properly right so it's just fucking nonsense people are fucking stupid and i'm just tired of it the dude needs to get his fucking credit because he's a great quarterback and he's fucking proving it minka fitzpatrick balling out for the steelers one of the primary reasons why that team now is in the fucking playoff hunt and 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 currently holding one of the wild card uh spots 
you know, uh, okay, so Laramie Tunsil might have a few penalties on the year, but he and Kenny Stills are helping the Texans, you know, lead their division and, and you know, uh, are pushing for the playoffs. Uh, Robert Quinn has... Last time I checked, he had nine and a half sacks, um, close to 10. I don't know if he's surpassed that to this point, but he certainly could over the next few games, but nearly has double digit sacks for the Cowboys. You know, are the Cardinals very good? No, but Kenyon Drake is now their lead back and certainly has produced for them, right? Um, Kiko Alonso has been injured, but he's done good things for the Saints, which are a really good team. I mean, it's just, it's it's absolutely fucking, Frank Gore continuing to set records for the Bills who are pushing for the playoffs. I mean, none of this needed to happen. And we didn't even, we didn't even regress to an average team, right? I mean, at best, at best, we can win five games now at this, se uh, this season, which in you know, my evaluation, right? Because I, I, the way I, the way I see it is, is average teams fall in the range of six and 10 to 10 and six, right? It, there's an average there. Average isn't necessarily just eight and eight. And then, you know, uh, the bad teams are five and 11 to oh and 16. And then the great, the really great teams and the ones that you expect to be competing every year for playoff spots have 11 plus wins, right? So, um, you know, Steven Ross and this front office and coaching staff have taken a team that was, that was average, um, you know, and, and made them absolute shit put us into you know the 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 bad team category for sure and for what for what for what so anyway that's really all i got for you guys it was a really short preview like i said i mean there wasn't really that much to talk about um you know and so oh, real quick though the four points because i i didn't i didn't talk about this yet so real quick the four points can we win this game Sure, this is definitely a winnable game. We're going to have to, you know, uh, do our, our run game sucks, but hopefully we can, you know, limit Saquon Barkley. That'll certainly help us. And then, you know, I'm not, I think Eli Manning has, has been a hindrance to that team overall the past few years. And I think they really should have, you know, moved on from him already. Um, but he did, you know, come in and help them, um, you know do all right the past game even though you know they ended up losing to the eagles um you know so we'll see i mean it's it's certainly definitely a winnable game obviously this is you know we're gonna have to keep an eye on you know who the coaching staff put on puts on the inactives list how they call the game you know do they continue their trend their overall trend on the season of of being bad with timeouts and challenges um you know, how do they use certain personnel? So um, there's definitely going to be some things to watch out for on the coaching staff. I don't think, uh, I certainly think rather that the players are going to give it their all. They have every single game. So I'm not worried about them, um, you know, playing as hard as possible. So it's definitely, definitely, definitely a winnable game. That's the number one thing. How competitive are we going to be? Um, again, I mean, I think the players are going to give it their all. Um, and certainly against a bad team, um, you know, we can be competitive if we played the, you know, when we play the Patriots, I don't think we're going to be competitive at all. Um, you know, when we play, if we were playing the Ravens or the 49ers or, you know, the Saints, I don't think we would be, you know, competitive at all. Um, this game, obviously we're playing a bad team and that's important context. So can we be competitive? Sure. And certainly we need to be, if we're going to win. Injuries, obviously, we need to continue to monitor how that goes and then, you know, see what potential bright spots, you know, come out of this game. So, um, yeah, with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you guys do enjoy my videos and my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Make sure you share my channel and my videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And, of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.